I'm not really good at sleeping uh, the night before a tournament. I might catch a couple hours sleep, then I'm up early, and maybe two hours earlier than I expect other people to get there. Because I'm a disabled kayaker, it might take me a little while to get that kayak down to the water and all that, lug all those gears and lug this and lug that. I might have to do six or seven loads uh, to get everything into place. So I need to allow a little bit of time for that. Usually what I do is I try to estimate what kind of species I'm going to catch in that specific place. Then I go to my tackle box. I'll select two or three of my favorite lures for certain species, and I try to have lures for every species and put them in a tackle box. So I usually end up with two, maybe three tackle boxes, depending on the amount of species we go for. Preparation is interesting because in a multi-species tournament, there's this overwhelming underlying feeling that you have all the time that you need every single piece of your tackle on your kayak, which you're fishing on a kayak. You can't bring all of your tackle all the time. So when you're fishing a multi-species like this, you really have to be you know, wise in your preparation. What are your target species that you're going after for that day? What is the target species for that tournament? And then what I do is I always, I always pre-prep a tackle box for that one tournament. I like to just, you know, go through my gear, make sure that everything's in order. I've just caught these little tips off, you know, some of my, my fellow friends who are a little more organized than I would be, I'd say. When you have to bring a tackle box or seven tackle boxes, so you have all of the gear for anything that might happen that day, that's a different process. And it's, it's a lot more competition. There's a huge strategy that you have to think about every single tournament. Um, so the multi-species aspect of it is a huge draw, I think. You want to be able to prove that you can catch five or six or seven or eight or nine different species at one tournament. When you're trying to catch multi-species, you're trying to catch total inches of each individual species added together, your biggest of each one. That can be really tricky. So if you need to catch another six inches at the end of the tournament, you're not going to get it in a sunfish. You're going to have to try for some bigger feces. Each angler has different strategies and strengths that can give them the advantage. Gear is important, but having a plan makes all the difference. I try to make sure that I'm fit enough to take advantage of the paddle side of the sport. The drive for me is the challenge. I'm always willing to learn. Uh, that's actually what keeps me fishing. Doesn't matter how much you think you know of a certain species, you can still go there one day and not get a bite, but you can see the fish. There's all kinds of us that can cover water, like Renee covers water. Um, it's all in what you've planned out. A lot of people, you know, they'll make that one cast and that'll throw their plan out the door because I made one cast and had a fish, then I could throw my the whole game plan out because now I get caught up catching a couple of species and, and it changes your plan. I don't like sitting around and waiting for fish. Uh, I like moving. I'm constantly casting and trolling. If, I'm, if, I'm, if I actually sit down for a spot, it's because I need to catch that fish in that area. Uh, there's some species that can go in school. So if I haven't caught a white perch, I'm, I'm looking around and I see somebody that's constantly pulling something silvery and flashy out of the water. Well, I might go over there and take a look, see what's going on. Depending on what tournament, um, we have had tournaments in the past where we go after striped bass, and my tackle is very light if I'm going to target just striped bass. Um, I might have three rods. When you're doing a multi-species day, I have a bare minimum probably six rods on my boat. Uh, and I know everybody does this, but I've got you know five, six, maybe seven rods on the back of my kayak, and I will have a rod set up for every single species that I want to catch that day with the lure that I think is working at that time of the year. Mirror Machine, a familiar launching spot for hook and paddle, kicked off the 2020 season. With striped bass being the target species, Corey Connor registered the largest on the day with a 27.25 striper, securing first place and an early lead in the series. Quispam Sis on the Hammond River saw John Cale secure his first win of the series. Not to be outdone, Rene Peltier was the only angler to land the target species of trout, kicking off an uncontested Lunker Point run through the next few tournaments. Indian Lake saw John win his second tournament in a row, highlighted by the only sucker caught that day. Perth Andover, Oromocto, Mactaquac, and Chipman tournament stops saw over 500 fish caught, photographed, and released, highlighting 12 different species. Travis Melanson notched his first tournament win, and Rene Peltier narrowly pushed ahead of John Cale for the first time in the series. Nakawick, the last stop before the series finale, saw multiple anglers go for the target species muskie, 
hoping for a chance at huge movement in the standings. Ultimately, the Muskie eluded all anglers, setting up a tight race into the final stop of the series, Grand Bay Westfield. Grand Bay and the Nerpus. Uh, I haven't spent much time fishing the outer section um, because it's brackish and you know, more salty. Um, but again, if you're looking for a sturgeon, that's your opportunity. Uh, there are stripers swimming by, that's your opportunity. Uh, Grand Bay Westfield is a spot to go get those sturgeon. And it's also a place to get almost everything else. Grand Bay Westfield used to be, or I used to go practice, to go fishing for other fishing tournaments. You have to cover a lot of water there. And the way that Grand Bay Westfield is, it's kind of like these two rivers that branch up and they kind of continually meet like this. So you to get up into spots where you know certain fish are, you're looking for certain structure um, to catch pickerel, you gotta go way up far to catch pickerel. You can't catch pickerel out at the mouth of uh, Grand Bay Westfield. I was fishing way up river and there was this spot, I was trying to target smallmouth bass and what I didn't really expect and what I really wasn't anticipating is what species I was gonna get in there. 